Good morning everyone. Um, half past nine on a, sun, a Sunday, Saturday morning, I've lost a day, on a Saturday morning. Um, as promised, um, for those of you that have already read the Daily Punt, I sort of might do a video if I get time and I've got I've got half an hour in my busy schedule, uh, he says, to um, get a quick Chepstow video in. I thought I would because the ground isn't really what I thought it was going to be on, when I started doing the, um, the write-up on the punt on Thursday. I know I've written one of the, the big races up on the card, the Silver Trophy. But I, I, with what was happening down the road at Foss Lash, which is hardly a million miles away, and they were sort of half underwater at the time, I was genuinely playing on sort of good to soft stroke, softish ground for Chepstow any day. It's nothing like that at all. Um, both the, the way that they were finishing the races off yesterday and the time suggests it's, it's good ground. Um, and possibly even as one or two of the jocks were going back and saying a, a little bit on the quick side and that's shown with one or two of the trainers pulling them out yesterday and already this morning as well and there's, there's a few come out and I think a few more may come out which makes looking at the whole card now a little bit difficult because you, you're sort of trying to frame a race and see what a bet might be but with a lot of these it's a case of having to sit and wait until race time before you get involved um, and none more so actually with this first race this um Champion Hatch Juvenile Hurdle at 140 because um, a fascinating race, a really interesting race, but there's, there's quite a few reasons I like it. Um, I think there's a bet in the race in so much as I want to lay Billy the Squid for a place because I just don't think his form's good enough, but you need runners. If that's going to happen, you need runners. Um, and you might, there might be one or two of these that get pulled out. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, we'll go through. I mean, the, the odds on favour at 8 to 13 is the Paul Nichols thing. Hell red because Paul obviously introduces nice horses into this race. Um, he's six from 13 in the race. Six wins from 13 um, entrants over the over the years. Um, and hell red, I, you know, French form. I'm no expert on French form, but it's clear from the ratings that it, it's decent. That Otoy second. Um and as we and as they, you know, taking the clues that he, he enters one of his better ones in here, then they obviously expect Hal Red to go close. Second favourite, Ball Valley's interesting too um, for Colin Tizard, not least because Colin's already pulled four of his out, I think, today over the card, but has left this one in. This one has not come out because he did race on quick ground on his debut at Plumpton when he only just got touched off by Pete Moss. Now that form on its own isn't good enough, but... The fact that Ball Bailey, I think, was put in at about 7-2, to 4-1, to one, I think, in the morning and drifted right out to double that and more on Betfair rather suggested that they thought he'd need the experience. So I think he'll come on plenty for that. He needs to, but I think he will. Um, then you've got the likes of Hector de Sivilla, who was made odds-on to beat Hyconic at Newton Abbott first time up. Couldn't jump to save its life. Took one good look at the first and then basically that was that. Um, fiddled his way around. He'll surely know more this time. A lot of Nick Williams is from that yard. They they learn as they go, and I think Hector de Silva, given the money that came for him that day at Newton Abbott, to be what was at the time, and probably still is actually the the highest rated juvenile so far in Hyconic. Um, that sort of sort of says he's better than that as well. And then you've got Sandy Berg um, for Harry Whittington, and Harry's introduced nice ones in this before. He's two from seven with his runners. And he's not out of it. And even Phoenix Aquilius, who's been shoved in at a 25 chance for Seamus Jirak. Um, I mean, you look at the breeding on it, and you know, all the, the, the stamina comes from the, the dam side, uh, the, the sire slave power, certainly not. But on the dam side, um, you've got a, a, a dam that um, was a half sister to Tiger Roll, I think, if I've got that right. Um, so the, this, that's where the stamina comes from. And I could even see him take into the game, to be honest. He was rated 70 on the flat after a couple of runs and he, he doesn't, didn't look entirely useless and the sort, and he got the, the scope for this. So there's plenty there. And with that, I thought Billy the Squid has been shoved in around about a 10 to 1 chance and you can lay him at 2.38 at the moment on Betfair. I'd be surprised. He's run to the same level, four runs. He's not really improving. He needs to do better than that because he's going to be up against some good ones here. And I'd probably have done Billy the Squid a lot bigger price than he is at the moment. And I think I'd like to lay him for a place at anything up to sort of 13.08, 7 or 4. Um, so 2.38, but you need runners. If you're going to lay these sort of bets, you need runners. You've got to, you've got to give yourself chances. We found that the other day when we put Dali Malte up as a lay um, on the on the Sporting Life. Um, and you end up with three runners and you look a fool because uh, you've got the, the, the horses left with nothing to beat. You've got to make these, these races have got to be competitive if you're having these bets. So 
So we're holding on and see what happens. Um, 2.12, uh, two mile handicap hurdle. Really good little race, actually. Um, worth pointing out that this is nowhere near as, as it, it isn't a class two race. He's putting it as a class two race. This is a class three race. Um, 0 to 150 um, is the uh, top and bottom limit and the top in here DSR is 138, 12 pound below that ceiling. This is not a class class two race by any means. Now you've got another one here, another short price favourite and what do you do? You've got friend or foe um, Paul Nichols coming back off a 537 day break and has had a wind up, been shoved in now two to one and on what it's done, on what it's done, you couldn't bet it at two to one. I mean, it won a, won a juvenile hurdle back in 2018, December 2018. Picked some moderate sorts that day. There was nothing there particularly that you, you'd think, you know, that would make that form stand out. And then just want to match it. Chepstow at, at 25, an uncompetitive 25 zone match. And just, it's, you, you're taking two to one on the fact that it's Paul Nichols, it's Chepstow, and this horse might still be well handicapped because it's unexposed. But on what it's done, I'd be struggling to bet it at two to one. Um, there are others, you know, you, you go through them and there are others with chances. I think the interesting pair for me, probably did they leave you out too, who off 130 is more than capable of winning a race of this nature. I mean, he's, to me, this is a class drop for did they leave you out too um, on some of the races he was taking on last year. He didn't really show a lot, but 130 now and Nick Gifford did have a winner. They finally got the mighty Don to jump a fence yesterday, which was good to see. Um, and he could... I'd have him a bit short then I think he'll have him to two because some of the, the rags I think I'd have a bit bigger so I think he's he's interesting and you've got to forgive Fair Mountain a bad one last time but he's got his good ground um, and he's, he absolutely needs that this is a bit more competitive than one or two of the races he's in but he's drifting like a barge he's at sort of 16 now and that's st starting to make him look a bit more interesting too but I think did they like, did they leave you out too I wouldn't be surprised if they come for him and he goes off a sort of 7 to 2 4 to 1 chance against the favourite uh, 247 Native River Handicap Chase, again, trippy race really, one or two of these could have been in the veterans yesterday. Uh, not least Bally Optic, but Bally Optic, he, again, he was putting his paper favourite for this last night, 9-2, to two. he's already 15-2 to two and drifting. If he can win this off a mark of 163 on this ground, then, you know, we should all be, <laughs> you're almost looking at him as, as, a, as a great, it's almost a grade one performance if he can do that, and I don't think he can, I, I can see him continuing to drift. He has got, I mean, we associate him with soft and heavy ground. He has got one piece of good ground form. If you go back a couple of years, of course, he was, uh, and he just touched off in the um, uh, the Scottish National by uh, Joe Farrell. But that was off a mark in the 140s and he was race fit. So I, I, I can't, I'm struggling with Bally Optic. Um, similarly, Brave Eagle, I'm not entirely sure he's up to this. Secret Investor. Don't think we've seen the best of Secret Investor yet, but again, 100 to 30 for a horse that's only got a couple of small field wins over fences so far. I can leave that alone. I've got a lot of time for Bolmere. I think he could be very useful this year, and he was going to win the Toten when he tipped up. Um, 145, and Caroline Bailey's cross park came back to form as well yesterday after a moderate season last year, so he's got chances. Now, uh, Steely Edition is, is an interesting one. I have given him a good mention on a, a, another website to sort of say, you know, that he, you're taking a chance with him. You've got to... You basically got to put a line through last season, but he was he had two races there that he couldn't possibly win. He was never going to beat Santini getting six pound, and I don't think three and a half mile in heavy ground. He travelled all right that day at Haydock, actually. He travelled into it and then stopped very quick. I think he's got issues, Steely Edition. You're chancing him. You want 20 to 1 plus, and he's not anywhere near that at the moment. You'd want 20 plus, but he, he's of some interest if you go back a couple of seasons. He's reasonably well treated now. Potterman, ground has come right for Potterman. Um, steadily improving. This is a bit more, this is a bit tougher than the market racing race, but nevertheless, he's going the right way. If he handles the undulations, he's been kept to flat tracks. Interestingly, Potterman, Pan all his wins have come on pancake flat tracks. So he's got to cope with undulations today. But that aside, his, his chance is very solid. And I'm not mad keen on anything down the bottom. Some chaos, Django Django, I think, on softer ground and Seddon. I'm not, again, it's all small field stuff with Saddam. I'm not entirely sure he's, he, this is his bag. So I think the interesting pair, the interesting one really, I think is, is Steely Edition, but I'd want a bigger price than you're getting at the minute, definitely. Um, then you've got a novice's chase where sadly we've lost a lot of the interest with um, Fiddler on the Roof, one of Collins that he's taken out already. Um, I'm not surprised. I mean, he's a, he's a big unit Fiddler on the Roof. He does need a little bit of cut because he'll be thumping the ground. 
when he comes down, um, which sort of leaves it towards... Well, they've, they've gone six to five, fuse or raffles, two to one, long hour sale and three grand on seat. Um, I'd have it a little bit closer than that between the three, I think. Um, I don't think there's a bet in the race. I was looking to take on long hour sale if the ground was going to be soft this weekend. I was very much against him, but the ground isn't soft, so it gives long hour sale another chance. He's jumped very well in his, his three starts, you have to say. Um, I think a mark of 147 might flash him a little bit come this winter. He, he won't be... He won't be particularly um, operative off of that mark once the, the soft ground kicks in, but he, he could win this today. But it's not a betting race. It's not a betting race. Just an interesting race and one to watch. Um, then the silver trophy. Now, on the, the punt, um, I've given St. Sonnet the vote, and I'm not... I'm not changing my mind on that because I, you know, I think if they if they genuinely do believe he's a, a grade one animal, and the fact that he was chucked in at grade one level after one run at Catterick last year, then you know anything in the one forties is going to look low, isn't it? So I think it's they they've seen an opportunity here for Saint Sonnet to win a a, a nice pot before they go back um, over fences with him, and you know and you know they're not going to leave him short. So I think he's interesting. He's got different ground to cope with here. That aside, I think he's interesting. But I'm going to have another bet in the race. I went back over it again with fresh eyes this morning. And I'm going to add hometown boy in down the bottom as well as a second bet. Um, when you, He's a horse I like. I, you know I'm a big fan of Stuart Edmonds as you are. Big, big fan. I think he's criminally underrated. I think he's a very, very good trainer, Stuart. Um, and this horse was steadily progressive throughout last season. Um, won a little handicap hurdle at market raising with his head in his chest. Um, and you knew he was he was still well treated. Handicapper gave him another £13. Pound. Um, and they reverted back to a novice hurdle. And he gave £6 to McFabulous and made him do some work. It was only a four-horse race. But he made McFabulous pull out a few stops that day. He got beaten three and three quarters, three and three quarter lengths in the end. But that is a decent piece of form now when, when you take it on its own, given that, you know, what Matt Fabulous has done since. And it makes it a mark a look 130 look m more than fair. Now, he came out again at Kempton and blew out. He, again, that was behind Matt Fabulous in that grade three, um, that, uh, grade three handicap hurdle at the end of Cheltenham week. Um, but I'm just going to say over the top, I'm going to I'm going to say he was he, he had enough of the season by that point. And I'm not going to I'm not going to judge him on that. Judge him more on the market raising run. Um, and I don't think he'll mind the ground. I think he'll be all right on it. I'd, ideally, I'd have liked a little bit of cut, but I think he'll be all right on it. And you, you, nine to one's fair. Nine to one's fair. So I've had two bets in the race. I've bet Saints on it, and I'm going to bet. Um, I'm going to bet uh, the Stuart Edmonds horse as well. I'm going to bet the pair of them. Uh, Four thirty-two. Sadly, the price has long gone about the Bay Birch. Um, I saw the Bay Birch at Warwick and she is one of my selections today elsewhere. Um, unfortunately, there were some 11 to 2 and 9 to 2 around last night. That's, that's just disappeared into thin air now. Um, I thought the Bay Birch would nearly win at Warwick and she nearly did. She just needed that run. Um, as I say, I was there that day and when she came into the paddock, I thought, ah, OK, you just need this today, don't you? But she travelled like the best all through that contest. She kicked clear on that last bend and I thought she's still going to win anyway. Her class is going to get her there. And then she's just got tired and uh, a race fit in, in Form Temple Park picked her off. With that that now under her belt, I think she'll take a lot of beating here. Given she won this race last year off a high mark, much higher mark actually. 137 is a very, very winnable mark. She can win this and go and win again, I think, if she doesn't blow a mark. And that was the that was the problem last year. She won this race too easy last year and she was she ended up getting higher rated at one point last year than both the Bag Wire and Lady Buttons. Work that out. So, you know, you, you're not going to be winning off them sort of marks in handicaps. But now she's back down to something that's far more, and you know, far more workable. And this has clearly been the plan, given that she won the race last year. But as I say, price has long gone. If you, if you ain't on it, 11 to 2, 5 and 9 to 2, you know, she can win now without your money on, quite frankly. But I, I think she'll take the beating in that, um, in that handicap chase. And then we've got two divisions of bumpers, which I'm not going to insult your intelligence by by looking at on paper because you just can't i don't think you can look at bumpers on paper if you if you're not there to watch them run then you shouldn't be betting in them right um there we go then that's chepstow folks i hope that's um giving you a pointer or two i say i think 
yeah, yes, Saints on it in that big race, but yes, hometown boy as well now as well. I'm going to add that in now. I've had a, a second look at the race. Sometimes looking at the race another day with a different pair of eyes and you spot something that you didn't spot the time before. So, um, Good racing then. Enjoy this afternoon and uh, I'll be back next week. Cheers.